Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Ami's World. And that's right, I'm Ami, and I am back with Kizzy and Stim. So let's get started and see what's going on with Kizzy. I went to the library. No, not today, but I'm just getting to write today. There is a lot more to a poet than you think. Miss Ann Spencer had books on makeup and she let me look at them, but then she invited me to her study for tea. Hmm, I didn't want to go, but how do you say no to a force like Ann Spencer? Hmm, you don't. I poured over the books on makeup and I have to admit they were overwhelming. Lots of diagrams that look like you need a degree in engineering to understand. <laughs> well, it seemed like that for me. Who would think putting on makeup would be so dang hard? But the books she put for me were like for masking scars, not just your basic makeup. And I started getting real nervous. They were for people with severe scars. Like me, it seemed to be so complicated. So I put the books on makeup back on the shelves and went to her study. She had tea and things ready for us. And she sipped her tea and then she cut to the chase. That's exactly what she said. Let's cut to the chase, Kizzy. You're looking at these books on makeup because you want to cover yourself up. Am I right? She took a delicate sip of tea. I nibbled on the scone. Well, at least I think that's what it was called. I don't really know. I'm not too knowledgeable about this tea etiquette, as you may expect. Well, to look at the reactions of people around Lynchburg, you think it dominated my countenance. And if by that you mean it's the main thing they see when they look at me. She smiled, she has a real pretty smile and I don't see it often. I rarely see it because I rarely make her smile. I'm often a nuisance to her. And she set her teacup down. Kizzy Ann, I'm not in your situation and I have no scar, but I know two people who were scared by life and scarred. Not dissimilar ways, let me tell you about them. Hmm, my first thought was, can she really know two people who had severe scars? That's pretty many. But then I guess a librarian knows a lot of people. My next thought was I probably missed some of what she was saying and that's rude. And Granny Bits would have me skinned alive if she could read my mind right now. So I better stop thinking and start listening. Miss Ann must have known that I wasn't paying close attention because she put her hand on my hand and looked me in my eyes. And her soft voice said, my cousin was beautiful, like the flowers in my garden, Kizzy Ann. When she was 19, she was trapped by fire in her bedroom. And though she escaped through the window, her neck and her right side of her face was damaged. Laura could never recover from that sad fact that when she looked in the mirror, she no longer saw herself, or not the face of herself, but the face of a stranger. She retreated from people and wouldn't be seen. She wrapped herself in scarves, and even though her skin would hurt to be touched by any fabric, sometimes I think I reveal my flowers and just to be close to the beauty that was a part of her. I knew another person touched by tragedy, but rather than letting it shape her life with sadness, she made her own way. She was burned differently. More of her body was burned. And so there was more scarring, but it was less severe. Still, when you look at her, you knew she'd been in the fire. You knew she had been damaged. People stare. Miss Andrew Spencer swallowed, then she nodded slowly. Yes, Kizzy, people stare a lot but my friend just didn't care well no ma probably not isn't right that she didn't care i suppose she did care although she never said she just went ahead with her life she didn't wear lots of makeup she didn't even stop doing what she was doing she went ahead with her life and lived it because she had things she wanted to do and she did them miss ann picked up her teacup and then she took a sip i think you kizzy ann have a choice to make with your life do you want to be like my cousin? Or do you want to be like my friend? Or do you want to fall somewhere in between? It seems to me that you're a young lady with a whole lot of life and much to offer the world. But then I'm not the one living your life. I sat there for a few minutes holding my teacup, then I put it down and stood. I didn't know what to say, but then I thought of something. Miss Ann, 
Yes, Kizzy Ann. When you're reading your poems. Yes. People stare, don't they? Why, yes, child, they do. I don't agree with Miss Ann Spencer that her cousin and her friend had scars from similar circumstances to mine. In my opinion, a fire is nothing like a skeet that slices through flesh. Maybe a fire that is set on purpose, but what she described was an accidental fire, the kind of flame that rises out of dying embers left smoldering in the fireplace, kicked up by sudden gusts down the flute, embers that dance and catch a curtain and climb quick and wild. That kind of fire you can feel sorry for. You can feel sadness seeping into your bones, but I don't think you would feel the raw anger I felt towards Frank Charles Feagan. I know you're surprised to read that. I'm surprised to write it. I never even told myself that, so how could you have known? I could be friendly to him, and I have been. I've shared my dog with him. For Pete's sake, I was mad at him. So, well, I guess I was angry which I think is much bigger emotion than mad. But Granny Bit says that anger is wrong, especially when things are accidental. And it was an accident. Frank Charles had no intent in his swing. His movement was distracted by the anxiety of my dog and my amazing, incredible shag. And I can admit to you, here in my journal, I feel such guilt still feeling my raw anger towards him. And I do feel some tiny bit of anger towards him. Even though I think of him now as a friend, Miss Anderson. And I'm amazed to think that he's a friend to me. I suppose I haven't truly forgiven Frank Charles. And I don't honestly know how people forgive and forget, as we were told to do. I say I do. Granny Biss insists on it. But I seem to hold on to my grudges and remember who said hurtful things. In fact, I can quote them back almost verbatim, sometimes months after they've happened. So how in the world will I ever shed this ugly thing fill in my heart? Well, boys and girls, that is Kizzy Ann's feelings. And finally, she admits how upset she is with Frank Charles. And for a while, I guess while I was reading the journals, I could kind of tell that she was really bitter towards him and she hadn't forgiven him just yet because she didn't want him around every time he came to gather around to talk to her or to pet her dog. She was really on edge and she was kind of really defensive. So today she finally admits how she feels. And because she admits how she feels, Miss Anderson knows how she feels. So what do you think is going to happen next? Do you think Miss Anderson is going to help Kizzy and Frank become closer or teach a lesson that maybe Kizzy would understand forgiveness? I don't know. What would you do? Have you ever held a grudge or been so angry it's with someone that you just couldn't get over it? And every Or you thought you might have been over it. And then when you see them again, those things kind of come back up. That probably means you just haven't forgiven them completely. Or it means that you remember something terrible that happened to you and it's kind of hard for you to get past it. So if you're like Kizzy, what would you do? Or what are you doing now to try to forgive that person or to get past it? It's a tough challenge, but we can do it. And it's probably the best thing because I heard that forgiveness is a medicine, not for that person, but it's a medicine for you. Okay, boys and girls. So we'll be back tomorrow with more of Kizzy Ann Stamps. And keep in mind, we only have about another seven more journals to go. All right. Have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow right here at Ami's World.